Hello there, my name is Tyler, but over here on the interwebs I'm usually referred to as uh, Tyler.psd And holy hell do I have an exciting video for you today Hold up, before we get into it, just take a moment and look, look Sweet baby Jesus, if this sucker came out of my wife's womb, I don't think I could be disappointed. Oh yeah, if you don't know what this is, please pause this video now and hit up the link below. Then come back and be ready for the awesomeness that is about to commence. The GTX Titan X, everyone. Did I mention this thing glows? Because it does. Other than that, however, NVIDIA did a good job with styling. Good. Not great. I say that because it still has the old, somewhat bland look that NVIDIA has been following with all of their high-end reference cards. With this being said, the blacked out finish with the NVIDIA green accents is a nice touch. Even though this is what the Titan Black should have looked like, not this card. It gets the job done, and that's all that really matters, I guess, since under the hood, the Titan X packs a serious punch. The Titan X, unlike its predecessor, the Titan Z, is a single-chip GPU, going back to Titan roots, of course. However, with nearly 300 more CUDA cores, a higher core clock, double the memory, and the same energy output, Mr. X over here trumps the previous single-card Titan, the Titan Black. The only thing the Titan X has in common with the Titans of the past is the price tag, coming in at um, a measly $999, well, compared to the Titan Z that is. Speaking of comparing to the Titan Z, let's see how these two cards stack up. The Titan Z is the previous Titan card Nvidia has released. Remember that the Titan Z is a dual chip card, meaning it's rocking two internal graphics processing units as opposed to Titan X's one. Also know that the Titan Z is triple the price from the Titan X. So is doubling the CUDA cores enough to give the Z enough of an edge to justify its price tag and extra power consumption? Well, let's find out. The first benchmark thrown at the Titan X was 3D Mark Fire Strike, an evaluation of gaming performance through OpenGL. Wait, 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 wait a minute. Back up. The Titan Z scored less than 200 more than the Titan X? For three times the cost and half the SLI capability? The Titan X is looking very promising. In the extreme Fire Strike benchmark, it's the same story, with the Z edging out a marginal 8% advantage over the Titan X. I think the winner is becoming quite clear here, people. But wait, there's more. We haven't even looked at SLI performance yet, and since the Titan Z is a dual GPU card, you can only have two running a 4-way SLI configuration, whereas the single chip X can have four cards running together to achieve 4-way SLI. I guess the Titan Z has officially been booed off the stage at this point since Video Card's SLI benchmark comparison in 3D Mark 11 doesn't even include data taken from the Titan Z. I think the numbers do the talking here. The Titan X is officially going to be the fastest single card on the market. If you look up the definition of overkill in the dictionary, the four-way SLI Titan X is what you will find. Because, well, well because... Anyways, hardware junkies, if you have anything to add to my first impressions of the Titan X, or want to leave your own take on this twinkle in everyone's eye, definitely feel free to do so in the comments below. I guess all that's left now is to wait for the release and see what the actual gaming experience is like. Till then, thanks for watching. Buh bye bye